Welcome to the Artist Advisory Hotline, the podcast for artists who want valuable guidance and honest answers on how to grow their careers and develop their new project from leading art world experts and artists. Here's your host and founder of the Artist Advisory, Marina Press Granger. Tune in as she gets you the answers you deserve. Hello, artists. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am so, so very proud to bring this episode to you today. Today, you're actually going to hear from some of the artists that I've worked with because you know how sometimes when you hear somebody else say something, it really resonates differently. It lands better, maybe. Uh, So I just for just in case, right? Although I really hope that everything I tell you lands you know, right on, um, on the target with you guys. So, you know, today I also really want to thank all of the artists who have worked with me in the past. I've now worked with over 100 artists. So thank you. Thank you all so much. This podcast, this community, everything I do is possible because of you. And I'm so grateful and I'm so truly honored that you were able to give me your time and to trust me. And really, I do not take it for granted. So thank you. Thank you so, so much. And thank you to everyone who's listening to this podcast, whether you have worked with me or not, it is really an honor. So thank you. And thanks for following me on Instagram, engaging with me, you know, liking my posts. I am so, so grateful. I, every day that I do this, I walk into my beautiful office in the East Village and here in New York City. And I just pinch myself because I'm like, oh my God, it's actually happening. I'm literally taking out the toxicity from the art world because that's my goal here, right? I have worked in the art world in New York City for nearly 15 years before I started this company. I was a gallery director for a long time, and my pet peeve was seeing really talented artists get the runaround. So that is why I do what I do so that you don't have to go through anything negative, right? Or as little negative stuff as possible. And so that you can really achieve what you want to achieve, uh, you know, by doing it smarter, not harder right? That's the goal. And it'll save you time in the long run. I know, you know, listening to this podcast time, right? Um, Watching my YouTube videos time, working with me and my programs, that's time. But guess what? It will save you time in the long run. And in these interviews, you'll hear how you'll save time in the long run. So anyway, I just want to say, Ultimately, I'm so grateful to the artists also who have come on uh, to talk to you guys about what they have learned from working with me, how they have worked with me in the past. Uh, The artists today are Yvette Molina, Ken Forbes, Erin O'Neill, and Ellen Burgeon. And we're going to hear from them. They're going to tell you a little bit about what it was like to work with me in the Artist Academy. I've now done this program 10 times. Uh, That's like my Al Bundy moment where I'm just going to keep repeating that over and over and over again because I'm so incredibly proud of being able to do that. And I'm so incredibly proud of the artists who have done that as well, right? Who have completed this program. There have been over 100 artists who have done this program now. So literally still pinching myself. Ow. (laughs) Okay. So I want to tell you also a little bit about this program. You know, I already told you why I did it, but let me tell you a little bit more. A big reason that I did this program was so that I, you know, I was working with artists one-to-one at first, and that was wonderful, but the most beautiful thing was seeing artists connect with other artists and building that community. So having a community is amazing. It is key, and I wholeheartedly, um, that is one of the biggest reasons I do this program, so that you can all support each other, and it's for artists of all levels, because what artists that are emerging can learn from seeing other artists who are a little bit further ahead is that 
they too can do this, right? They get to learn that it's possible to get to the next level. And then visual artists who have worked at it for a long time, when they are working with artists who are just kind of emerging, they're looking at them and they're thinking, wow, I'm so grateful to be where I am because look at all the things I've accomplished. And that gratitude, it just puts a little pep in your step. It gives you a lot. <laughs> it gives you a better vibe. And guess what? When you have a good vibe, people want to be around you. Okay. And that means galleries. That means collectors, everyone. So here's the thing. When I work with artists in the Artist Academy, what we do is it's a four month program. We meet once every two weeks in a live group Q and A session. That's pretty intimate. So I really get to know you and there's a set curriculum. We learn about how to set your personal roadmap to success. We learn about how to communicate your intention, your elevator pitch. You get to learn how to write a compelling artist statement. And for those of you listening who are like doing a million different things, there's a way to combine everything under one umbrella. And believe me, when I tell you it can happen, you're going to hear it from Yvette, who's here today. She's done two different, uh, very different things. So you'll hear from her and how that all connected. Uh, you also get to build or update your website so that it's conducive for um, communicating everything you need to communicate about your work, what's available, what size it is, um, what does it look like, what's its vibe. And it's based on two very proven templates that I've developed in Squarespace for the artists that I work with. If you're not really good at technology, the beautiful thing is you also get one-to-one -one tech tutoring with a member of my team. And so they can help you uh, learn how to do this. They can do a lot of it with you so that you're taking the guesswork out of how to do everything, right? On top of that, you do get tutorials. So you can do it on your own, on your own time. But, uh, and actually there have been artists who I've worked with who are literally, uh, you know, started working on computers maybe when they were, you know, not too long ago. <laughs> and so they're not that great. Uh, but they were able to follow my tutorial. And I'm just so proud of that and proud of you guys for doing that. So good job. Um, we, you will also learn a lot about social media and how to use it wisely so that you're not just kind of throwing whatever up against the wall and hoping that it sticks. Uh, so that you can use social media to get in front of the right people, to build relationships, make connections, and stay authentic to your message and to your work, right? This is not about being like kind of corny, right? We're going to stay authentic. And you also learn how to find collectors and an audience that really resonates with your message, You'll learn how to generate sales. Uh, you, there's also a bonus where you get to, you get uh, email templates and you guys, I've sold literally, I, when I was a gallery director, I sold a lot of art, just a lot. I just, I don't want to even give you the number right now because <laughs> first of all, I don't know if I'm allowed to, well, yeah, I'm allowed to give you the number because it's, okay, um, so at one point I sold nearly $1 million worth of art for the, in one year. Right. Uh, and unfortunately I was not working on commission. So sorry, <laughs> sorry to me, but, um, anyway, that's, that's why I'm here with you today because I wasn't making commission. No, because I really want, I really, really know that you can sell the work, you can find a gallery, you can do it on your own, you can sell work for a lot of money, and you don't even have to be as famous as Jeff Koons or whoever else out there. It's because I've written checks to artists that are big, big checks, right? And there are artists who maybe, maybe they make I don't know, maybe they make three paintings a year because their paintings do take a lot of time. And you might not know who they are if I told you their names, but they are living their best life. 
and they're out there and they're in front of the right audience and they're in museum shows and they're making six figures, that could be you. <laughs> that could be you. And I believe in you. And so the other big reason I really started this program was because I saw that because of the internet, artists could get in front of anyone and everyone. When I was working in galleries, I remember it was 2008, and I decided to start a uh, Facebook page for the gallery where I worked. I was a gallery assistant then. It was a gallery on the Lower East Side. It was like uh, from that first exodus from Chelsea to the Lower East Side, that kind of gallery. And it was amazing. I really loved working there. Um, it has since closed, but... <laughs> In 2008, what was amazing is when I made that Facebook page, I foolishly at the time, because I didn't know better, but I posted the price of uh, an artwork and the artwork and the gallery owners actually, they were like, Marina, this is like so crass. You can't do this. And I was like, I just, you know, I just did it. Oops. And, um, and then like an hour later, they sold it. <laughs> So um, there was something to the internet. And I was like, hey, I think this internet thing, this is really important. So when I started this company in 2018, it was after I had real, like, so, like literally that was 10 years later, I had so much more experience in the art world. Like I said, I was a gallery director for a long time. And I really understood that artists had so much more power because of the internet all of a sudden you can get in front of anyone. And if you present your work properly, you can really make the right connections and get in front of the right people. So that's what I want to do for you with this program. I want to empower you. I want to get you in front of the right people so that you are taking the guesswork out of everything that you have to be doing, right? That's just, that's a lot of energy guessing all of this stuff. So I don't have to tell you much more about this program. If you want to know more, everything you need to know is in the show notes. And if you're listening to this uh, podcast on Wednesday, the 26th, I actually have a special early enrollment uh, price. And so if you sign up um, or actually I'll just open it up on my website, early enrollment is available through uh October 28th at midnight Eastern. No, let's make it midnight Pacific because I know uh, that some of you are on the uh, West Coast as well. So we'll make it till midnight Pacific and you get 25% off. And here's a really cool bonus. And I'm going to actually have to turn off that second bonus and I'll notify you guys by email um, if it fills up too fast uh, because it's already filling up. I don't have that much uh, capacity to fulfill the second bonus, but the second bonus is a one-to-one -one session with me for an hour where we really get to talk about you and build your own personal roadmap to success, right? And that is invaluable. I do not do individual sessions because my time is devoted to the artists who are working with me in my program. Um, and so this is one of the best ways to just get your, get it all together, you know? So today you're going to hear from four artists who have worked with me in the Artist Academy. They've all worked in um, the Artist Academy with me in different times. Uh, so they don't know each other, but what they say is really, really special and I'm so grateful to them for coming on this show to tell you what it's like to work with me, what they have learned. Because remember, when you hear it from somebody else's mouth, it might resonate differently, right? It might land, you might learn something else. So I really hope you have a lot of amazing takeaways from their aha moments today. And the artists that we're going to listen to, or you're going to listen to, that I'm going to interview first are uh, Ken Forbes, who's based in New York, in Brooklyn, New York. And he just finished a wonderful residency and he's got a solo show opening up on, um, hang on, I will tell you. So Ken's, uh, Ken Forbes' solo show is opening up 
on um, November 17th at 190 Bowery at the place where he had his residency, which is the Germania building. And it's kind of a really cool, like no sign situation, uh, but it's really good. Um, so just, you know, show up if you can, if you're in New York, give him some love because he truly deserves it. Uh, we've got Yvette Molina, who has had literally a museum show. She's been in in the art world for 20 years. So you really, she's a, you know, a bastion of wisdom. If that's even a colloquialism, I don't know. English is my second language. Did you know that? I actually came to the U.S. when I was seven years old from Kiev, Ukraine. So I grew up speaking Russian at home. And so, cause I, we grew up, I grew up under the Soviet Union. So by the time uh, we came here, uh, I didn't have a chance to learn Ukrainian. We only learned Russian uh, before we went to school. So Russian was the first language in Kiev generally. Um, so anyway, so I speak Russian at home. And so I might say some funky things like um my husband likes to make fun of me because I like to say things like I'm ready for the you know you have questions for me I'm ready for the thunder round meaning not the lightning round <laughs> anyway uh so that's just something you should know about me but anyway so we've got Ken Forbes, we've got Yvette Molina, who's had amazing, uh, an amazing career so far, but this really, this program really moved mountains for her. And she's now in talks with a gallery to do a solo show um, based on, um, it's actually a gallerist who I have previously invited to speak to the Artist Academy and to meet everyone. When I do the Artist Academy, uh, we do meet once every two weeks in a live group session. For the first eight times we meet, we have a set curriculum. And then for the last two times that we meet, uh, I invite uh, special guests who are either curators or gallerists to meet the artists. Because by that time, the artists that I've worked with are very clear on how to communicate about their work. Their presentation is ironed out. And on top of that, they have all of this knowledge of the right questions to ask and all of these things. So it's really wonderful and great opportunities have happened to visual to, to artists who have worked with me. I've been getting in the uh, in the habit of saying visual artists because I only work with visual artists uh, and, and I guess performance artists, right? But that kind of falls under that umbrella. I do not um, work with all sorts of artists. However, Ken, who you will hear about, uh, hear from today is a poly artist. So you'll learn a little bit more about him. Um, I also have Aaron O'Neill, who's based in Chicago. And Aaron is an amazing artist who learned so much from working with me, especially has been very good at wisely, uh, making the right sales. So you'll hear a little bit from her about that. And then separately, I interview Ellen Bergen, uh, who just finished the Artist Academy. She was in the same group as Yvette. And she learned so much about how to communicate about her work. So she'll tell you a little bit about that. So without further ado, here we go. Let's dive into our very first interview with Ken, Yvette, and Erin. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me, Yvette, Erin, and Kenny. I'm so happy to see you here today, and I'm so grateful that you're going to be able to tell our listeners a little bit of what it's like to work with me, what you've learned from working with me, and also share a little bit about yourselves. So I just wanted to see um, who wants to go first and say, you know, where they're from and what kind of art they make. Penny, yeah. Surely, uh, either Great. way. So, hello, thanks again for having me. I'm Ken Forbes, AKA Art Boy, and I'm a poly artist. So I use different mediums like painting, music, acting, writing, 
technology in order to create interactive and immersive experiences. Um, you know, we all learn different ways. We all receive things different ways, be it visual learners or audio. So the more different ways I can hit you, you know, hopefully the more ways you might be able to receive the message. For me, the message is we're all human. And so let's stop being such bad people to each other and be a better versions of ourselves. That sounds like a message I can resonate with. I love that. And uh, Ken, Kenny, would you tell us where you're located as well? For yep, really? I'm in Brooklyn, New York, ladies and gentlemen. Woohoo! And um, I wanted to ask, you know, just say to our listeners, congratulations to you on you're finishing up a residency and you're opening up a solo show in New York, right? Yep. That is correct. Yeah. That is correct. That's so cool. Um, I could you tell us a little bit about how you got the residency and what that's about? Sure. Um, it's it was a really you know serendipitous journey. Um, I have a residency now at 190 Bowery, so it's the you know, famous Germania building uh, in New York City. Supreme is the ground floor. We're the rest of the building. Pretty sweet. Mm -hmm. um, I got it because I had a solo show in Brooklyn. And as I was picking up some of my paintings afterwards, met somebody, started talking. He was developing this app called AHA, Artists Helping Artists. Started throwing some ideas off each other, kept in contact, and he kept inviting me to different opportunities, uh, such as the New York Art League, where we have speed painting battles, um, another opportunity with Krauss House, wherein we created the world's first um, physical NFT basketball court. Um, mm -hmm. Yep. And then I got a call in July, him saying, hey, do you want to do some live painting over at 190 Bowery? I said, yes. I asked when I could pick up my stuff. And he said, don't. And that's when the residency began. <laughs> wow, Kenny, that's amazing. Congrats. Um, and I think, was that the solo show that you did right after you finished our group program? That is correct. So I had that show back in August. And then now I have another solo show at 190 Bowery, November 17th. Wow. Wow. Congratulations. Yay. All right. Um, and uh, Aaron or Yvette, do you want to say hi and tell us where you're located and what kind of work you do? You, Aaron? Yeah. We'll just move across the um, continental US. So now I'm in Chicago, Illinois. I am an artist. Um, I do painting and drawing of um, portraits of the inner child as a way of exploring uh, confronting generational trauma. And yeah, I, I do, my daughter's a big muse. I paint her a lot and yeah, that's, that's what I do. I love that. And I think it's so wonderful that you've articulated this about your work, particularly because this is something that we worked on together, right? Uh, yeah. We first started working together. Uh, it was now over a year ago, I want to say, right? Yeah. And uh, you did uh, enroll in my group program, and we just literally today finished working in a one-to-one -one program together. Yes. Um, and so I'm really curious to hear how you, how I was able to help you articulate this about your work, and also if you could tell our listeners, you know, a big um, takeaway on how they could do something like that for themselves. Like, where were you um, before as to now when it comes to talking about your work and how'd you get there? Um, I would say I was kind of on, you know, when I did the Artist Academy, I, I felt like going through the steps of everything that you kind of laid out in that program really helped me set on a journey of understanding what my art was about, what it was I was trying to accomplish as an artist. And then as we started working together one-on-one, -on -one, a lot of, it became more focused on my own personal mindset about my work and about my practice um, and what it actually meant and why I felt it was significant. 
Um, and those are difficult questions to grapple with, I think for anyone, um, nobody likes having an, like writing an artist statement. <laughs> nobody <laughs> likes thinking about like they're um, making and why. Okay. Hey, listen, but, if you like writing an artist statement, send me a DM because yeah. I'm curious to know who does. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, so that helped helping me kind of, you really, I, I, I would say you were really good at just making me answer hard questions and not leading me to an answer and letting me come to my own conclusions about my work. And as we were working together, I began to sort of have, as we we're talking about work and looking at work and, um, you know, we went to the spring break together art show. Um, art fair and everything and through that process just things started to click um, and I began to realize you know why it is I was making the images I was making and why I was drawn to the kind of work I was drawn to um, mm -hmm. and by understanding that I now understand what it is I'm trying to accomplish which was so much more of a gray area which is I think why I was having a difficult time making concrete progressive steps in my career. So, yeah. I can't wait to hear um, what kind of concrete progressive steps you want to share <laughs> with us. But um, I also want to know if there's someone out there who's listening, who also doesn't, you know, maybe they're, uh, they haven't worked with me yet, or they can't or whatever, but they are also grappling with these issues that you were grappling with. What's one thing you can tell them and how they can navigate it themselves and what kinds of hard questions to ask themselves and be gentle with themselves and their answering? Um, oh gosh, that's a lot of questions. Um, <laughs> I would say, you know, I would say that you just have to start a lot of what I think I was struggling with was that I, I was very kind of isolated. I wasn't in a community of people. I wasn't in a lot of situations where I was having conversations about my work. So it was just all in my head, right? And so mm -hmm. I had no wherewithal to understand if that was resonating or working or not. Um, and the more I spent time around other artists and engaging with other artists and talking with other artists, the more natural it became to identify themes and things that I was saying over and over again and things I was coming back to in terms of what I was interested in. Um, that I would say was a big, a big part of it. Um, and I see Yvette and Kenny are nodding their heads. Yes, yes. Yeah. I mean, we resonate with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, with that, and I just want to quickly jump to Yvette and see if she can um, tell us a little bit about herself. But also, before you do, Yvette, would you tell us a little bit about, you know, resonating with that, about talking about your work with the community that you had in the Artist Academy? You know, was it easier for you to kind of hone in on your intention because you heard other people's intentions when we went through the elevator pitches or like when we talked about our, when everybody spoke about their work. And I just want to say when in the Artist Academy, what I do is I teach you how to present your work uh, verbally, right? How to talk about your work in a way that's a little bit more captivating than just I'm a contemporary abstract painter, <laughs> right? Um, because we really hone in on why you do what you do, right? And if you are listening to this, you already heard Aaron and Kenny tell us why they do what they do, um, which I'm sure resonated with you in some way. So now you really remember what they do. But um, I guess you bet I'm maybe putting you on the spot a little bit. So let me back up a little, I guess, you know, I have been asking the hard questions. Uh, so let me ask you this. Would you tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're located and why you do what you do and what do you do? Um, thank you, Marina. I 
it's, it is funny that we moved from the East Coast to the middle of the country. <laughs> and now um, I have recently moved from uh, Brooklyn to Oakland, California. And so I'm based uh, in California now. Um, and I'm a multidisciplinary artist. I kind of let whatever project, whatever idea is um, moving me at the moment, I let that lead. And so like you, Kenny, I work in a lot of different mediums and um, everything from performance and ritual to, I work with textiles and fiber, ceramics, painting. I'm really interested in old um, techniques, really traditional techniques and organic mediums. Um, so I paint an egg tempera, which is literally like egg yolk and pigments, raw pigments. Mm -hmm. So that is of interest to me to kind of find older traditions working with contemporary themes. And um, probably the overarching theme that connects all of my work is this idea of um, how and what we care for. And not just other humans, but, you know, the plant life, the animal life, the, the water, the earth, everything. So um, I definitely believe we're all connected and that as artists, we're all in this together to kind of create the future we want to live into. Mm -hmm. And so I'm really interested in myth making and storytelling. Um, yeah, so that's a little bit about my work and my practice. Um, and Marina, working with you has been, the way it has been most valuable for me personally, um, I have been doing this a really long time and I've had very various chapters to my art. Can you tell us how long you've been doing it just for our listeners who yeah. might be out there thinking, well, I, I don't know if I can work with Marina. I've been doing this for a really long time. <laughs> I mean, well, that was a question for me. I, you know, before knowing you, I really was, I had this idea that I've been doing this. I've been showing in galleries and um, since 2000. And um, so for 22 years. And I um, felt that my experience, like I, I know what to do. Why should I pay someone to teach me things that I probably already know? And, and so I really had a question about whether I should, should be taking this class. And, and the truth is um, all of us need support at different times, actually, ideally all the time, <laughs> you know, at this, right? So I see, I see um, you, Kenny, uh, nodding your head. I mean, it's so true um, that having reminders of things we already know or just support on new ideas because we can't ever know everything. Like we, you know, mm -hmm. there's always different interesting ways to approach any problem. So it's been invaluable for me at a time where I had just moved cross country and was kind of feeling at loose ends and living out of boxes and trying to find my grounding to have your support and to have the support of a community and to have reminders on things that I knew but wasn't in a place to focus fully on. And so it helped give me structure and reconnect to my practice in a new way and to make goals and targeted um, you know, to accomplish things in a, in a, in a structured way. Love that. that is so awesome. Thank you for saying that, Yvette. That is so cool. Um, and I'm so honored that you trusted me to guide you, even though you've been in it for so long, you've been in it for, um, officially four years longer than I have. <laughs> so, so, and, um, I wanted to ask you if you could share with our listeners what your experience was like working in the artist academy with me what uh what came of it well um, <laughs> you know I think what's interesting is I had set 
several loose goals for myself before working with you, which was part of why I started, why I signed up is I didn't feel I had the energy to accomplish these goals. And um, very quickly, you know, the list of things I wanted to accomplish with my website, the um, never nailing down my elevator pitch, um, seeking out the, ga- the type of gallery representation I wanted, being interested in selling work again, which I had not made a priority for a really long time. All of those things came to pass. My website is updated and new. I have a shop in it, which I'd wanted to do for years to sell small objects and items, um, you know. Which I, you know, I couldn't resist. I got one of your very cool candles, um, <laughs> um, which is the mother destroyer of all obstacles, um, right? Is that what it's called? I'm like, is that what mother it's destroyer of obstacles. Yes. <laughs> need that. <laughs> need that candle. Everyone listening, yes. just go to Yvette's website and get that candle. It works. But anyway, so you've gotten your website down. You've got the shop up that you wanted to have up forever, which is like a big question of what do you put on your website so that you can both attract galleries and not deter them, but also have that occasional PayPal reminder or whatever that says you sold something in your sleep, right? Um, so, and what else happened? Let's keep going. Um, I worked on my elevator pitch, which is embarrassing to say after 22 years, it was something I had blocked. It was like, I will, I can't encapsulate what I do in two minutes. It's impossible. And I'm a slow, I'm someone who's very much about the human time, you know, like I want to be on human time. And if that means that I lose a relationship, a professional relationship, because they don't have time to, you know, like get to know me, then, then for me, that's always been okay. But it actually isn't okay. It's good to have your, your quick pitch. And that was finally achieved. Um, Yay. Okay. And I, um, I am in conversation. One of you have visiting uh, curators and gallerists come to your class. Yeah. And by chance, um, one of the, one of my goals was to work with a woman, like the next gallery that I would work with would be a woman owned gallery. And one of the gallerists, um, both of the gallerists you had come to our class were women. And one of them was very interested in my work and we're discussing a solo show in the Lower East Side for next year. Yeah. That's very exciting. Um, Yeah. So a lot has come out of this. A lot, a lot really, productive, juicy. um, I just got to say, you know, it worked out so much because not only what, and you know, it's not written in stone yet, but I'm going to tell you, it's because you had the formula down, you know, and the formula was you presented your work honestly and accurately online so that it was easy to understand what it looks like, what it is, what size it is. You were clear with your message. Your elevator pitch was nailed down to a T, okay? And on top of that, you had your intention, right? You had your intention of what you wanted, which is so important. One of the things we do in the Artist Academy is we set goals. And, um, you know, I wanted to see if there was anything, any anyone... If, did any of you guys set a goal that you didn't even know was possible? Like, you know, Yvette mentioned, I don't even know I could put down, you know, com- condense or actually articulate concisely what my work is about over the course of 20 plus years into two minutes. And she did. Um, I mean, for myself, something that you had you had said and preached and taught was how there are a million different ways to get paid as an artist, you know, to, it doesn't have to be, I make a big scale painting, put it in a famous gallery and, or the MoMA, look at that. I'm rich or I'm not. 
everything out there, every product and service has advertisements and needs some kind of artwork for it, right? And you know, so now I have a couple of corporate sponsorships that I'm working with and I'm like, oh, this is cool and provides, <laughs> it provides a living through the, the type yeah. of art that I like to do. Yeah. yeah so it seemed impossible at the beginning, and, but you showed the roadmap you know, and opened our, our eyes and minds on how it's possible. Yeah, that's so beautiful to hear. And, you know, for those of you listening out there, it's so important to understand that getting to your goal, right, of whatever it is, first of all, there's so many different ways to get there. I always have this kind of, um, uh, well, it's, it's timely because Halloween's coming up, but <laughs> I always say it's like, the center of your goal is like the center of a cobweb. There are so many different ways to get there, you know? Um, Erin, you wanted to say something as well. Uh, yeah, I was to say, I, you know, contrastedly to you, but I, I didn't have a big long career when I started working with you. And in fact, you know, I'd gone to art school and graduated. Um, and I think because I just hit a few roadblocks and was trying to just kind of wing it at an art school without a lot of foundational understanding of what, what was required of me um, in a business sense, I wrote myself off as like, well, I'm not, I'm not capable. Like I'm not able, I don't have, I don't have what it takes to like run an art business, even though I make really nice things. And I think my art is good. I'm not a business person. And I think when I started working with you, I started realizing, um, you know, that's bullshit. That's not true. I don't know if we can cuss. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's okay. I'll put <laughs> a little rating next to the podcast episode. Yeah. Um, so um, any artists under 18, any parental, <laughs> you know, guidance or whatever advice, I don't know. But I, but it essentially wasn't true. You know, I had, I had set myself into a narrative that was false and wasn't allowing me any progress. Um, and so prior to working with you, the only people who had bought work from me were family and friends. Um, and I love my family and friends. And if they're listening, I very much appreciate the support. However, I really wanted to start reaching a larger audience. I really wanted to start connecting with people um, that valued what I was doing, um, at what it, what it took to create it. Um, and so after the artist Academy, um, I got a studio, that was one of my goals and I got a studio opportunity and moved into that. Um, I had my first huge painting sale and, um, got a collector that I love and have a wonderful relationship with. Um, and, you know, I've started to get other inquiries and I'm having people come to me now that are seeing me and know my work, not because they know my family or my husband or a coworker, but because they just saw my work and it resonated. Um, so that that's happening in real time right now. Mm -hmm. And what I realized was, um, through working with you between things like an elevator pitch, between things like talking about what my work is about, between learning why is that important to the here and now of today? Why is that significant? Um, I was able to approach those conversations ready to have them. Um, if I had been approached by these people years ago, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have been ready to even talk about that. I, there's no way I could have made those sales or made those relationships or connections because I didn't know what my message was and I didn't necessarily believe that I had one. So that, that was huge. Um, and it, the, the opportunities that have come through, I'm starting to get invited to shows, not just applying and getting accepted, but I'm being invited to show with people. Um. Yeah, that is yeah. huge, Aaron. That is so huge. Congratulations. Um, yay, everyone's smiling for you and clapping. I mean, this is so important. And, you know, one thing I have to share with our listeners is something that, um, you know, if you could tell us a little bit about 
the one thing you learned, um, you said to me, Hey, I don't want to do commissions anymore. I definitely like this is off my, I can't, I can't, but I want to, you know, but I need the money. Like, not need really, you wanted the money, right? But so tell I us. I still want to make a living. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, more than just a living. Yes, yes. More than just yes. a living. That's the key. Yes. You can make more than just a living yes. as an artist. Guess what? Yes. Um, but what's that thing you learned about commissions? Um, you know, I, I, I was in control of what I offered and I could set the parameters. And I think you started to ask me questions about, okay, but what if the, what if we said that you wouldn't do commissions unless A, B, C? Um, and I was like, oh, well then, yeah. And then you were like, and what if people were paying X amount for those commissions? I was like, well, oh yeah. I mean, if that's what I'm getting paid, sure, I'll do it. And then it, it kind of clicked, right? That like, yeah. Oh, I wasn't offering what I wanted to offer anyway. It yeah. wasn't, the problem wasn't commissions. The problem was I had locked myself into believing there was only one way to provide that. Um, and once I set that in place, I got a, a dream commission with someone and I'm so pleased with the piece. And it's something that I can have as part of my portfolio that aligns with what the rest of my body of work is and what kind of messages they want to be outputting, not just like, oh, I'm just, you know, painting a portrait that you can hang on your wall and it's a nice gift. And those are lovely, but I only have so much time in my studio and I want to be making work I'm energized about. And so um, I love yeah. that. Um, do you guys feel, this is a yes or no question and <laughs> I'm really hoping you say yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you're, you're, you have the power to say whatever you want, because this question is, do you feel more empowered from learning what you've learned in the artist Academy? 100%. Absolutely. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I feel like, um, you're kind of like Glinda, the good witch. And it's like at the end of, I felt like I, we concluded our time together and it was like, you've always had the power within you, my dear, <laughs> you know, like it really was like that. I felt like I was in the wizard of Oz. Like I'm in this kooky world. Oh my I'm gosh, doing the and that, and that really was it. It's like, I, I, I'm not walking away. I mean, I, I would love to continue to meet every week and talk about stuff, but I, I'm not walking away fearful that I can't do it without you. I really yes. think you helped me recognize here's what's in your toolkit that you have that's really valuable yeah. and here's what you can expand on. Um, and that that's huge, huge. Um, thank you so much for that analogy. Um, I was laughing because Yvette nearly <laughs> fell off her chair because she was laughing because you know what? It's true. Um, and, you Halloween know, costume and, right there. <laughs> I, I love that so much because, um, and you know what? I'm going to rebrand my entire business now. <laughs> you are the Dorothy and I am Glenda the Good Witch. And yep. I'm going to show you that you had the power all along. <laughs> um, so uh, I have here, um, so you got, you had one last comment you mentioned in our chat, which I don't know if you want to tell us or, but I also have one last question for you all. Um, do you want to tell us you about it? One last question. Yeah. I just want to, when you had said, um, did you achieve your goals? You had mentioned that earlier. And I think one of the things that is really powerful about your class is that you have a workbook before each class of questions that you recommend we fill out. And I often ignore those things because I don't have time or you know, I, I put them aside, but I committed before taking this class that I was going to do everything you told me to do, to do. And I really do believe that, I mean, like anything in life, what you put in is what you get out. And so filling out those worksheets and really taking them seriously. Like I spent a long time really thinking about my answers and putting in the time and it was invaluable. It was so helpful to, for me just to create space to think about those questions for myself. 
Yeah. So again, it was a Glenda the Good Witch moment where it's like, I have it in me that you helped me create the space to, to make time for my own, you know, practice and goals and thoughts. So that was my, that was my comment. Even to second on to the workbook thing, um, I, I, I did Artist Academy in 2020. Um, and yeah. Yeah. I still go back to those workbooks when I'm feeling kind of, you know, stumped or stalled in an area, whether it's like how to talk to galleries, how to do your elevator pitch, how, you know, all the different sections that you cover. When I go into those workbooks and I, the answers change with time. So it's never like you fill the workbook out and it's like, that's the set answer forever. No, I go in and I refill them out and it brings so much clarity. It's, they're, they're invaluable. Like Yvette said, it's like, it helps pull that out I of yourself. I'm so grateful. And this whole time, by the way, Kenny is just nodding along to everything that Yvette and Erin are saying. <laughs> um, and you're, you know, sorry, Kenny, go ahead. <laughs> Oh, that's just a total agreeance. It's the same way, you know, if you go to the doctor and you're overweight, the doctor says, okay, I need you to work out. I need you to eat this, not eat this. Come back in three months after our program. If you're still not in shape and the doctor says, did you do what I told you to do? And you say, no, well, yeah. I'm really the doctor's fault. Yeah. So you got to put in the work and you will see all the fruits of your labor, you know, with what you put together. Yeah. And it's not always comfortable, but, <laughs> Never. It's but you not know, always comfortable, but it's I'm here like for that. you making it as comfortable as possible. Um, and I want, I have one last question for you guys, for anyone who's listening, who's really interested in the program, they're on the fence about joining. What would you tell them? What if maybe you were on the fence before, I know you bets was on the fence because she was like, well, I've been in this for 20 something years. I don't need, to, I know everything, <laughs> which, you know, yes, you do, but it's, you do know everything you bet now that you've taken my class. No, but you knew, <laughs> you knew everything before, um, but it's always good to have a different perspective, right? And I come with a very unique perspective in the sense that I've been, working in the New York City art world for nearly 15 years before I started this company, which is now almost five years old. So I've been in it for a while. But anyway, what would you say to these people? Um, I, I think I told you this before, but I you offered like a free workshop, like a masterclass through Instagram. And I was like, okay, I'll take this masterclass. I'll see how it goes. And I think in my mind, I was like, okay, if there's at least two things that she offers that I feel I couldn't have found just by Googling around online on my own, then I'm going to pay attention. And I want, I don't remember the specific things. It was about website stuff, but you brought up three things. I was like, oh, I hadn't thought of it like that. And that's not really something that you can put in like a, a web formula, a formula that you post online. Right. And just talking to you, I was like, I, feel good about this, right? Like you have to go with your gut. And, and I just had a good gut feeling after I started talking to you, I was like, I really do feel like she has my best interest at heart. Um, that it, it matters to her that I succeed, not just that I'm like paying for her program, but she's truly invested in what it is I'm yeah. trying to do. Yeah. And that was different. I mean, there's so many people out there who are doing programs, not unlike what you're doing, but all of them had been so like, here's the bullet points. These are the things you have to do. And it just felt like such a broad brushstroke. And I really felt like you were paying attention to how, what it is I needed. And, you know, and I think that speaks to the diversity of artists that are in your group, how the range of work that people are doing in the range of stages they are at their career. Yeah. So that's the big thing, right? You were all in different, you were all in a group with so many different types of artists, so many levels of, of how long you guys have been at it, but you still all found it very, very helpful. And I think a big part of that is Erin is so right. I care about you guys more than anything. And it's because I've seen, I've seen, I've worked with really great people in the art world before, but I've also worked with some not so great people. 
And it breaks my heart to see talented artists get the runaround. So I would never do that. And one of the most amazing experiences I've had was I walked into a gallery when I was like 18 years old in college and there was an art dealer who was Ivan Karp, um, who has been Leo Castelli's next door neighbor. I mean, he's been at it since 1970 or something like that. He's like a big, um, he was a big deal and he's passed away since, but he owned this amazing gallery and this artist came up to him off the street, which I do not recommend, by the way, if you're listening, showed him his portfolio and said, hey, I'd like to show here. And Ivan Karp took his glasses off. He took two seconds to tell this artist exactly why he couldn't show his work and told him to come back when it was a little bit different if he wanted to show there. And I thought that that was the most important thing. Yeah. Um, I also, I have here um, that Yvette has to go really soon, but um, we have an update from Yvette. You want to tell us? <laughs> Marina is not only an amazing artist, um, co-advisor, handhold yeah. cheerleader, magic witch. She is also, she has some sixth sense and, and um, I really think you are a good witch because she helped me visualize the return of my lost kitty who just walked in after being gone for 18 hours. So literally in this call. <laughs> literally on this call. So I feel like um, I'm indebted to you in many more ways than... <laughs> <laughs> in in heart ways and art ways and I have to run because I have another call but um thank you so much Marina I definitely recommend your um to any artist who feels like they're at a point where having the support of um not only just uh artist community to set goals but your advice um is invaluable so yes I can't recommend you enough. And, um, and it was such a pleasure to meet the other two of you um, virtually and maybe someday in person and much like luck and not luck, um, just continuation of your already amazing hard work because um, yeah, we've, we've, we've all got it in us. So bye. Yeah, I'm so bye, happy bye. to see your bearers back. Bye, you yeah. bet. Hi. Uh, and I wanted to ask you guys, so yes, with somebody's on the fence, Erin, you had your answer. Kenny, what would you say to them? Um, I'd say, you know, really, why not? Um, going back to Yvette's story of she's seasoned, maybe you want to do it or you don't, or you think you can do it on your own. The best vocalists in the world have voice coaches right? Beyonce, Lady Gaga, Celine Dion, still to this day have vocal coaches. So don't tell me you got it all figured out, right? Uh, and yeah, I, I know I didn't, but Marina helped me get there. And again, like, what do you really have to lose if, you know, this could potentially change your art career? Great. What, what could it hurt? You? So yeah. make the call yeah. and do yeah. it. I love that. So um, for those of you listening, if Beyonce can have a coach, how can you? <laughs> I love that. Go out there, be your best Beyonce, folks. <laughs> Kenny, that is literally a mic drop moment. <laughs> Thank you. So, no pun intended. Oh my God. I, I'm full. <laughs> I'm literally full of dad jokes. I've done this nonstop. Um, so I apologize for those of you listening and like face planting. You're like... But anyway, thank you so, so much, you guys. It has been such a pleasure to see you grow. Uh, and I can't wait to see your show, Kenny. I can't wait to see what next beautiful thing you all dream of. So thank you. Hello, Ellen. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm so happy to see you. How are you doing? Hi, Marina. I'm doing great. I'm doing great. How are you doing? 
I am so happy to see you. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so excited for this episode. And I am also pinching myself because uh, after we finished our last group session, I realized I had done now 10 rounds of the Artist Academy. And, you know, I, and it was just like, wow, it's done. And I kind of, you know, I was like, well, what do I do now? <laughs> so I decided to kind of commemorate it um, by having artists like you who've worked with me on my podcast to, to tell people what it's like and what you've learned. Yes. Well, I I love that. I feel like I need, we need to clink, clink a little champagne toast to your, your okay. final, or not I'm, your final, but your, you know, the closure of your of the um, first 10 rounds. I mean, that's incredible. Yeah. You should yeah. just take a minute and like, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just can't even begin to uh, let it all digest, but uh, you know, it's so symbolic that you're here with me and you're actually the first interview that I'm recording and you are part of the most recent graduating class. So I wanted to ask you, Ellen, first of all, could you tell us, tell our listeners a little bit about you, uh, where you're from and what kind of work you make? Yes. So I'm Ellen Bergen. I live and work in San Francisco, California, but I'm originally from a really small town in the South. Um, my, in my work, I'm interested in reevaluating stories that we've been told about femininity and womanhood and, um, you know, growing up in the South, I grew up with a very rigid framework of femininity that prized agreeability in all aspects of my life and left me feeling very silenced and unsure of myself. And in, in my work, I challenge and examine those prescribed notions and create paintings that are, my favorite is really large, expressive um, explorations of my voice. Yeah, I love that. And I can't get over the the first kind of painting that I saw and uh, was taken aback by, <laughs> uh, which is Bombshell, right? And so tell us a little bit about that one. Uh, just the title of the painting, I think, is very important. But for all of you listeners, if you want to go to ellenburgeon.com, you can find this painting um, or, you know, look find her on Instagram as well. But Ellen, tell us a little bit about that painting. Yes. Okay. So um, a lot of my, that, a lot of my entries into my work start with me thinking about language. And um, I, I don't know how, I, I guess I was just thinking about the words we used to describe women and bombshell came to my mind. And I just thought that was the weirdest word because it's kind of like language of war and I was like, where did that come from? And um, so I sit in my studio and Google, you know, the word and pull up all these really interesting images and these old drawings of, of bombs, like different bombs, like Russian bombs, German bombs, British bombs, American bombs. And, and I was like, well, that's just so strange. I wanted to kind of explore it and in a large format. So the painting is actually, you know, like, almost five feet by five feet on acrylic on paper um and that in a nutshell is kind of like how I find my way into a lot of my work is through research and I'll just have these ideas and um yeah yeah and I just thought it was so interesting that you know when you told me about this and you you know, we all associate bombshell with like a, a sexy woman or a sexy person. Uh, and when you really think about it, the word bombshell comes from war, which is right. really, really interesting. And then I said to you, I was like, hey, Ellen, isn't it funny how women, uh, when they're so attractive, they're considered threatening? And that's where the word bombshell really, that's how it all culminates. And what's interesting when I look at your work is that there is something really, really powerful and visceral about it, but yet it's kind of like 
it's got this really heavy message, but it looks so happy and colorful. <laughs> this is what I love. I'm talking why well, I love talking with you and working with you so much because you get it so quickly and you're able to reframe it almost for me and speak back to me like what I'm thinking. And I just think that's a really unique quality. Um, I honestly haven't met someone like that before. Or maybe it comes from your your art history background and your, your work in the gallery. Um, uh, but yeah, I just, uh, now I got sidetracked off the question, but like I, um, it, it's just a really, interesting to have these kind of conversations and yeah. to, to to know someone who gets it and you're right the painting is really pretty and it's pink and it's colorful and it's kind of like me I straddle a line but you know we well we all straddle lines between you know who we are on the outside versus who we are on the inside and um but yeah, you, you just get it really quickly. It's amazing. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Ellen. I'm paying attention. <laughs> I'll just tell you that. Uh, but also, I, you know, thank you so much. And it's so helpful to hear that I was able to help you reframe your work and kind of put it into a nice package, right? So yeah. that this message, and I've seen your more recent Instagram posts, how have the, how has this repackaging, this reframing affected the way that you communicate about your work? I can't tell you how powerful the things that I learned from you. And it, it almost is like it increased my self-confidence in a way that I'm just so grateful to have found through you because it completely shifted the way that I think and talk about my work. And I, I don't like to, you know, put myself out there really, but through your help and my work and under, you know, deeply, more deeply understanding how to communicate has given me a lot of confidence. I've always had a lot of confidence in my work, deep, deep belief in my work, but I've never had any confidence in myself. And the whole like Instagram thing and the reels, I, I couldn't have, I'm, I'm not exaggerating. I would not have done it without your class, period. I would not have, I would not have done it. So it's, I'm very grateful for that experience. Oh, Ellen, I'm literally gonna cry. Uh, thank you. It's so true. It's so thank true. Um, if you could tell the people listening, what are some of the biggest takeaways from the things that you have learned in through working with me in the Artist Academy? <sighs> the biggest, there's so many, it's hard to <laughs> put them all down. Um, I really, I really did try to take advantage of all the you you gave us so much information um that I think will keep giving me you know as I go back and re-watch and re-listen and think more about what I want to post um so I think I mean other than what we just talked about like the fact that I just found a, a renewed confidence and a, a framework for speaking about my work um that, that I took away was my relationship with Instagram. Facebook is still a mystery. I'm going to leave that to the side. But, um, you know, I think um, your, your own presence on Instagram has inspired me in a way, you know, watching, watching what you do and learning what you do. And then thinking about how, what mess, what, what is authentic, authentically me and what I want to present is a big shift for me. Um, and that I have embraced that is just um, amazing. And also um, the fact that, that I had technical support to help through some of the thing, you know, help literally like figure out, well, this is how you um, delete a real draft a draft of a reel that you don't like, you know, so there, there are so many takeaways, but I think 
that has been a really big one for me. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I just want to say it's so, I, I'm so happy to hear that you are now finding Instagram to be a little bit uh, more fun, probably more easy to use and that the one-to-one tech support has helped you so much. Uh, it's something that I thought, you know, even myself, I, I'm not an Instagram, uh, well, I'm not an internet native, right? Like uh, when I was a teenager is when I got my first computer. So while I'm still like good with computers, there are so many of us who are not native to computers. And there are just these little things that could be so helpful if somebody just sat down and showed us. And what you're saying is so true. You know, the first time I actually started to post a reel, which was probably a year after they even rolled out that feature, it took me forever to post it. And I was good at computers. So I thought it can't hurt to have one-to-one tech tutoring available to the artists that are enrolled in this program. And I'm so grateful to hear that it worked for you. The other thing that's really interesting to me is that you put this importance on Instagram. Why is that? Why is Instagram important to you? Okay, so I love this question. Um, Instagram for me, this is for me, has really expanded my community. And I'm not, those are not just words. Like I use Instagram to connect with other artists, to, um, follow galleries that I think are interesting. And I, I take advantage of those things. And, you know, I have met some of my favorite local artists through Instagram and we've gotten together and swapped studio visits. And that's just, I think, a really um, incredible thing. We're all in our studios with our head downs and then to have this powerful visual network that we can use at our fingertips is, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I think so too. I really put importance on your online presence in this program, because I think that that's the number one way that we connect today, right? It's the way that we make these connections and what we do after we make them is also really crucial. So I wanted to ask you this as kind of a, you know, a final question for you. Um, Why did you, you know, what made you decide to take the leap and do the Artist Academy? Why, you know, was there anything holding you back? Uh, What was your thought process for anyone who's out there, who's listening, who's thinking, well, I don't know, like, seems like a good idea, but I I don't don't know. (laughs) What would you tell them? So that's a good question too. I had, I was in my, I remember I was in my studio and thinking about like community and, and what I wanted to do next and had a lot of goals in, in my mind. And I don't know, but I think your information or a story came through on my Instagram and you had been offering kind of a get to know me session. Um, and I signed up for that and, and then I was, and I loved it and I thought it was great. And I got the, the, I reached out to an artist who had taken your course and she couldn't say enough good things. And I was like, well, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to do it. I'm going to throw caution to the wind. And I'm so glad I did. I'm so glad. Oh, I I was so glad. Yeah, that's right. I taught a uh, free masterclass. I don't Mm -hmm. really remember the topic. I think it was something um, like how to use the internet to make connections or something like that. Yeah, I think it, I think it was. And, you know, and it, it was an investment in myself, um, and it was worth every penny for me. Really. Oh, Ellen, I am so, so honored and like so delighted to hear that. Thank you so much. So for anyone who's like on the fence, what would you tell them? Oh, do it. I mean, why not? I mean, and honestly, from my experience in the class, you know, it's hard to know. Well, because it's hard to know. We're all at different stages in our careers, right? So for me, I was like, well, who's going to be in the class? Who's going to, are they going to be like professional artists? Are they going to be very beginners? But what I found was it was a very wide range of people in the class. And I think everybody, it it meets everybody where they are at their level, which is amazing. 
um, you can take what you need from it, you know? And um, so I think I would not hesitate, you know, to, to make the, to make the leap. Yes. Thank you so much, Ellen. It has been such a pleasure to work with you. And I look forward to, you know, seeing you on the internet and keeping in touch. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I love talking with you anytime. We'll chat anytime. Yay. I'm available. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for listening. Support your community by sharing this podcast, leaving a review, and follow The Artist Advisory on Instagram at the underscore artist underscore advisory. And visit us online at www.theartistadvisory.com.